it's very difficult when markets like this, when everything looks absolutely terrible, you know, it's very easy to extrapolate the worst. But generally speaking, it feels that it's going to be shallower and shorter because I don't think it's driven by the halving cycle any longer. I think this is driven by the macro. This is a pure macro event. And I think as Ethereum has become a more dominant ecosystem over this cycle, its own kind of triple halving or whatever you want to call the uh, the ETH2 merge is going to be another factor within this market. So I think the structure of the markets changes, and that's just the network maturity that we talked about before. It's just how things how things evolve over time. So I think the structure has changed. I think it's going to be shorter because we think the macro cycle is shorter. I think we all kind of agree that that feels like that, that that's where we are. So it's short and brutal, but it's not been as brutal as the past ones because the past, past ones were crushing bear markets. Don't forget, this time in 2018, we talked about 2018 a lot in this um, chat, is at that stage, 2018, we were down huge. I, I can't remember mm-hmm. what we were down in Bitcoin by the 2018 Fed pivot, but that was the low. Bitcoin has managed to bounce back after crashing to an 18-month price low over the weekend. Right now, the cryptocurrency is trading at just below $30,000, marking a 56% drop from its all-time high last November while other leading cryptocurrencies are also way down from their record highs. The downturn has seen more than $1.5 trillion wiped from the market and led to warnings from analysts that another crypto winter similar to 2018 may be underway. Bitcoin's precarious price comes as El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukel, hosts 44 countries on Monday to discuss the merits of the cryptocurrency and the benefits of adoption. Let's hear about the reasons behind crypto volatility and crashes from macro expert Raul Paul. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video where Raul Paul explains why this bear market will be over soon and the chances of a Bitcoin super cycle. So without wasting any time, let's dive right into the video. It was what I was hoping to see, mm. which is that the, the more mature the network gets, the less volatile the price becomes. So I was expecting, and yet to be proven out, that each time we go through a bear market, that we see lower um, percentage falls. Mm. So Amazon is I, I use this as my best example of network adoption models. You know, it came out of it, it went public. It fell ninety five or ninety six percent in two thousand one. It then rallied back. It fell sixty five percent. Then it fell like forty five percent. And then the sell-offs were 30%, and then was even less. So that's because the network gets more mature as more and more people join it, so it becomes less volatile. So that should be true of Bitcoin and should be true of Ethereum. And I think that's playing out. So what ordinarily would have been maybe at this point down 70% has now been in a sloppy down 50% sideways range. Okay, that's a whole new thing we haven't seen before. So it's interesting. Now, it's it's yet to be proven out. You know, who knows what so, plays out. I look at the chart of Ethereum and I'm like, you know, this could be a head and shoulders top, in which case we go significantly lower. You know, we go back down to 1,500. Who knows? Um, or what's more likely is I think is we're forming a another sort of wedge and that therefore 2,000 is the low. I just, you know, I don't know. These are volatile assets. But you know that the early adopted, so Solana should be what Ethereum was in the last cycle. How much was Ethereum down in the last cycle? 95%. <laughs> well, it's going to be somewhere around that, right? And we've seen that play out that kind of, you know, Ethereum, well, Ethereum has been slightly different because it had so much adoption in this cycle. But generally speaking, they kind of look like each other at early stages, like the Amazon. So the early ones look like Amazon and they become less like Amazon over, t- you know, they, they become less volatile over time. So Bitcoin and ETH seem very similar these days in that kind of volatility structure. But, you know, Solana, Terra, all of this needs to be proven out. Raul Paul thinks that the world is going through a recession period, but he remains confident that cryptos will be a viable instrument class in the long term. 
The Real Vision CEO said that the Federal Reserve's recent decision to raise interest rates will further damage a reeling economy. Raul said, My macro view is that we're in recession. It's going to be pretty nasty. The Fed shouldn't have done what they did, but the bond market tightened for them anyway. The Fed didn't actually do it. The bond market did it all. The Fed are going to have to unwind this mess, but it could get messy at first. Using all the technological indicators that I look at, my view is if we are going to reach a proper bounce or a low, it happens in June. So we've got between now and June for everyone to freak out. Ethereum is over fair value because of the burning, which is a different source of demand that doesn't appear in the Metcalfe's law kind of models. I think that's interesting, and that has been why Ethereum has done very differently. Now, if that increases because of the triple halving effect, then that should further lead to the Bitcoin outperformance, uh, the the ETH outperformance of Bitcoin, which I've you know been watching for an extended period of time, and that seems to be ongoing. So barring any change in anything, it should outperform over time. Unless something dramatically changes with volume structures. Now, what we and we go back to earlier, what I said is when I look at my analysis, Ethereum is going nowhere. We've got no new participants, and Bitcoin's going nowhere. But Ethereum has had has had luck because it's had NFTs and they've burnt a shit ton of tokens. And that's been because Ethereum ecosystem is vibrant within it. It's just not growing, i.e. people are not coming into it. Regarding the fate of cryptos within the broader economic turmoil, Paul suggests that leading smart contract platform Ethereum has held up relatively well in the face of inflation and the international sanctions fallout after Russia invaded Ukraine back in February. The, the STIMI check was a new thing that we'd not really used before as a monetary tool. So the issue is with just printing money is it makes the rich rich because the the nominator falls and the value of the assets go up. So people who own assets make a fortune and the people who don't own assets get poorer. So that's creating, you know, this issue with, with polarization in the population, populism. But if you give it directly to people, politicians love it because you buy votes without having these pork barrel things that you get in the US, you know, where, you know, people get their defenses fixed by the government because they, they refuse to sign a deal unless it's done. That goes away. You kind of bypass all of the political system and you give it directly to people. It actually helps people who need it. So it helps with the disparity between rich and poor. It is kind of a bit of the welfare state that, you know, the US could never implement while most other countries have it. So it's a way of kind of doing that by the back door. Um, so I don't see a world with which this does not get used. I haven't done anything. I've not sold a single thing, not done anything. I've started to average in on the gro really growthy tech stocks for the reasons we talked about, yeah. because into the carnage, if I'm right, and this is a super trend and a super cycle, then you want to be owning this stuff for the long run. Now, which companies are going to succeed or fail, we don't know. So you buy kind of baskets of stuff, you know, much like you might do if you wanted to capture the the movement in crypto. Crypto is the same, is, you know, you've got to be, if you believe that that network adoption continues, then this is when you should be buying. Right. Right. But, you know, it's just not everybody has endless amounts of cash to keep putting in. <laughs> that, that we, is the problem. We wish we did. We wish we did. The macro investor is confident in Bitcoin and crypto's long term prospects and cites inflation as the reason retail investors are not currently flocking into the space. The space is not going away. The central banks are building digital currency rails. Everybody's building everything. We're in this period where retail investors couldn't afford to dollar cost average anymore because their pocketbooks got hit by negative real earnings. Their wages didn't go up as fast as inflation, so they have to spend it at the supermarket and not crypto. The Macrovision founder concludes his crypto talk by mentioning how despite the wild price swings that Amazon's early investors endured, long term the company has been quite profitable. Everybody is completely confused between what inflation is. Mm -hmm. The thing that, every, that crypto is all about is the debasement of fiat currency. That is the printing of money. 
The printing of money has proven not to be inflationary in Japan and Europe and the US. There's no correlation. Inflation is a different thing driven by the supply and demand of goods. It is not everywhere and everything a monetary phenomena that was taught to the, to the monetarists back in the 1970s coming out of the Chicago school. It doesn't work because velocity of money doesn't pick up. So people have been the gold crowd the same. It's like the inflation. Well, what did gold do and protect against that? Because gold actually protects against debasement of currency and not the inflation. Inflation, nothing protects you. So do you agree with Raul that Bitcoin's bear market will be over soon? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.